Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode I've made a few changes. First of all I copied over my configurations for RSS visual enhancements from 1.1.2. I didn't copy over the plugins because those would have had to have been updated for 1.1.3 but hopefully the configurations can still stay the same so maybe we'll have proper clouds and won't have any problems with that but we'll have to see. Um, as far as our mission this time is concerned, I am looking to do this Venus mission here. We have a transfer window in 117 days, so hopefully we won't have a roll issue like we did last time. Some people suggested that it was because I had a trim on somehow, and I, I didn't think I had ever done that, but uh, we will see. I built a completely fresh rocket, so if it was a problem with uh, the, a rocket from the previous version, this is a completely fresh rocket, uh, nothing left over. I have deliberately left off a reaction wheel just in case and persistent rotation is still in so we will see but uh, if it continues I'll attempt to take persistent rotation out and we'll see how it works with that. The rocket I've built is sort of a Delta II class rocket in size though not in engines. Uh, we have a very complicated probe here and uh, so orbital camera, two of these early controllable cores, just a little bit of delta V in, in itself, uh, one kilonewton thruster, aerosine, and N204, and mainly a lot of instruments as well as this high gain antenna. Now again the high gain antenna might not be properly configured but it's the only one I've got that can do interplanetary missions and it says it's suitable for missions to Venus so Fair enough, but uh, we still got that purchase weird purchase problem. Maybe it's not uh, not meant to be used, but um, well, it'll take a little bit of time. We'll have to do this mission first before we can unlock the stuff to to uh, get better antennae. I think that'll take about 160 science. So we've got that, and then we've got the Delta Avionics package, and then the Astra stage, as you might expect, and extra solar panels. I thought about stopping an extra antenna on here but I don't think it's necessary for Venus. Maybe for Mars it would be. Okay and then this is the next stage. This is uh, I'm just gonna call it an RD-58 even though it's the S1-5400 or 11D-33 whatever. Um, we've got uh, Arizona 204 RCS thrusters, separation rockets and 4 minutes and 10 seconds of fuel because that is its burn time limit. Otherwise I would definitely have wanted to put more fuel on because its thrust weight ratio starts out pretty high and oddly enough stays pretty high. I'm not entirely clear how this works. Its thrust weight ratio starts out at 1.66 and ends up at 1.7. Doesn't that seem like it didn't burn much fuel in that time? That's weird. Okay, so of course I decided to use the NK9V here because why not? Uh, it's a great engine. And in this case, for the first time ever, I am using vernier thrusters, LR101s. Now the downside to this is the LR101s, oh I can get an upgrade at least. The LR101s have way less uh, vacuum ISP than the main engine, and so that's horrible. But they do have the huge gimbal and can control roll. Um, five kilonewtons is, I mean, uh, we, well, we'll see how it works out, let's put it that way. Uh, I certainly don't want them to be more than five kilonewtons, because then their bad, bad ISP will have more of an effect, but, hold on, uh, the burn time, the max burn time for the NK9V is four minutes, so I want to make sure we have a full four minutes there. Okay. So, and then the base stage, I have an RD-253, so one of the Proton engines, and that gives us the necessary thrust. I couldn't put an actual Delta II engine on because it doesn't have enough thrust. We'd have to put boosters on, and we really don't have very good uh, uh, SRBs. So, yeah, I don't think we even have procedural SRBs in here, which is interesting. Yeah, no procedural SRBs. And I'm, I'm afraid baby sergeants are not going to cut it in this case. So you'll note that I have fins, and that is because this is a very tall rocket. I could have made it fatter, but I didn't want to. So it's a fairly tall rocket, and I'm worried about stuff. And also, there's no way for a single engine to control roll, so fins will do. 
by the time this stage is out, we'll be through the atmosphere, and I think we'll, the fins will be good enough through this stage, hopefully. Okay, so that's the basic idea. So, save. Avionics is okay. Only 39 days to build this, which is excellent. So let's uh, build at least one. And I feel like I want to build another, just in case. Well, it sure seems like we build things quickly these days, because we've got both Aphrodite rockets ready, and we're still 33 days out from the actual Venus transfer window. I think, well, we're just going to time warp a little bit. Now, of course, the reason I'm doing this instead of stuff preparing for our moon landing is because I want to test out the roll issue and uh, see if everything else works all right. Okay, here we are, and you can see it is, in fact, a very thin rocket. All right, SAS on, throttle is up. Looking okay, though. Oh, uh, we should check about our relationship to the moon. I mean, it's not strictly necessary, as I've said many times. Oh, well, that's a pretty harsh relative inclination, so I will time warp through that uh, to get it less. Because that's 56 degrees different from the plane of the ecliptic as well. That's a lot to deal with. Okay, so of course I'm... Uh, Curious. I mean, it doesn't look like we could uh, figure out whether the clouds are all right in the nighttime, so that's sad. But we can check whether the roll issue is a problem. Now, I haven't touched anything as far as roll. I just throw it up, so there shouldn't be any latent roll programmed in. Okay. Ignition. And launch. Okay, it does start out with a low thrust to weight ratio here. Looking good. Not even sure we strictly needed the fins, but hey, that at least controls the roll for us. We are past the speed of sound quite decisively. Approaching maximum dynamic pressure. Roll oscillation. Now again, the next stage has verniers, so we'll see how that works out for us. Okay, getting ready for separation here, holding at 30 degrees. Set. And ignition. Okay, NK9V is good, and we have our vernier thrusters active. Okay, no roll oscillation now. Everything seems sit seems stable. Don't want to jinx it or anything. Maybe just having two vernier thrusters would be enough. Atlas only had two, not four. That would improve the efficiency of the stage. Well, at least with these configurations, there's no obvious problem with the land suddenly disappearing or anything. I mean, they will be at 100 kilometers, though. But with the other configuration, it happened earlier, which was not a good time. I mean, 100 kilometers, you can always do the pointed at space sort of look, and then you don't notice so much. So, 100, yeah. This appears temporarily. It'll be, it'll be back by 1.30. Uh, we can uh, take a look at a skybox until then. The fairings are fairly tiny at the top here, but I guess we can ditch them. Alright. We do carry the fairing base for a large amount of time, but... It's better than having a huge fairing, I think. Okay, we are looking good for orbit on the third stage. Everything looks to be nominal. Now, the good thing about the third stage is it can restart. So, if necessary, we can do that and use some of its juice 
to start off our transfer. I have to say, this stage is uh, very well controlled thanks to the Verniers. I need to start making set stages and sort of combining them, sort of like is done in real life. You know, my equivalent of a centaur stage or something like that. Could be interesting. Okay, we better keep it stable here. Okay, set. And ignition. Okay. RD-58 here. Or, um, uh, it's earlier version. Plenty of juice for orbit. I'd say, uh, probably about 300 extra. Well, now, this stage does not have any roll control. I mean, it does have roll control, but it doesn't have any active right now. So, if there was any latent roll, uh, it would be occurring already. So, apparently, I had done some accidental trim somehow with the previous episode. So, we'll go with that as the explanation. And off. We are in orbit. And with 262 meters per second to spare, 187 by 176, and let me plot for Venus. Actually, somebody had asked uh, how I make my maneuvers, or to show how to use maneuver node editor. So let me get rid of the the node here, and we'll just go through the basics of how to make a maneuver. If we are going to one of the inner planets uh, inside the orbit of Earth, we would start off the maneuver. Okay, we'd start off the maneuver here. And if we were going to one of the outer planets, we'd start off the maneuver over here. So, uh, call it roughly uh, between 10 and 11 o'clock. If uh, we are oriented so that the sun is at 9 o'clock, yeah, basically just orient the sun at, let's say, 9 o'clock right there. And then if it's to the inner planets between 10 and 11 o'clock, you make your node. And then if it's to the outer planets between 4 and 5 o'clock. So, yeah. So somewhere around here, we have to actually be able to punch your orbit. All right. Now, uh, the first thing is obviously escape. So let's just make sure we escape. And then uh, have a tangency to the orbit of Venus somewhere. So we have to touch the orbit of Venus. And then we'll just uh, continue on until there's something. Okay, well, there's something there. Okay. Well, once there's something there, we go to Maneuver Node Editor. And uh, we never do the radial, or at least uh, not at this point. In order to do a radial shift, which is what we need here to close that gap, uh, we actually shift time. And so, let's say I subtracted, you see those go further out. And then so I shift time and increase it but what that's done is it uh, has actually increased the size of our orbit so that we're no longer touching the orbit of Venus and in order to correct that we add a little bit more prograde and there we go uh, I generally try to uh, encounter the planets at either the ascending or descending node if it turns out that the descending node and ascending node were here and here that would be impossible because, uh, well, it's just too far away from our current location to correct anything. And so then we'd have to do a mid-course adjustment. But as long as the ascending node is somewhere around here, see, all of this area, our resulting orbit is very close to the orbit of Venus. And as long as the ascending or descending node is over there somewhere, uh, we can use that to our advantage to avoid a mid-course correction. The downside is that, generally speaking, we would we would then have a higher velocity encounter with the target planet. So anyway, uh, now we have an encounter. Okay, let's take a look at Venus. Focus. We'll note that our uh, periapsis is a little bit... Uh, we, we can do uh, fine shifts. Okay, so this... We just see what the result is. So this is moving it closer in this direction, but that's not good. 
Um, let's see, if we add a little bit more prograde, does that bring us closer? Not really. Now we don't have a contract for this one. So it's totally on us to figure this out and do whatever we want. So it's not like we have a absolute thing, but I want to sort of get into orbit around Venus maybe. I want to do all the science and of course the main thing was to test our rocket and make sure everything is working 1.1.3. Um, I think I want it further up so that it's more like in line with the orbit of Venus and then maybe the prograde Guess closer. Okay, so let's say here the closest we get is 367 ish. Okay, and then if we shift time a little bit more and then bring it in more, well, 332, so that works. So we just keep doing that. Now, sometimes when you iterate like this, you know, getting closer and closer, you'll lose the encounter altogether. But most of the time it'll work out. As long as you keep doing whatever brings your periasis closer to the planet. And uh, since we're not, our, our priority is to do the shift time and the prograde. If necessary, you can do normal, especially if you're right at the ascending or descending node, you could probably actually correct your inclination with the burn. But if you're far away from the ascending or descending node yourself, in other words, Earth is not in the right position, you can't really do too much. But as you can see, just playing around with prograde and shift time has proven to be more than enough. And that's a crash course at Venus. But this is where it's touchy. Uh, you can see this is where it's uh, accurate to a hundredth of a meter per second. Uh, that makes a difference between 211 kilometers and 1,200 kilometers. So, big difference. We'll go with this as our pass on Venus and see how that works. Okay, the engine says very stable. Let's go. All right. Oh, we had a little bit of loss of power. Um, but the specific impulse is still okay, so that's good. The worst is when the specific impulse, the efficiency, is dropped. Okay, all good. Set. And now with the Astros engine. And let me extend the supplementary solar panels, since we have them. And also activate the main antenna. Oh, uh, mm, I've done a bad thing here. Uh, the main antenna extends like that. Ugh. I should have left some room for that. Or I should have turned it the other way around. I should have turned it the other way around. It would have been better if it was flipped around. Oh, well. But it is active, right? Yes, it is. Now, I don't think we have enough to actually make orbit around Venus. I think this is just going to be a flyby again. But we have more instruments, so we'll get extra science out of it, I think. And off. Okay. Now, the touchy bit. So, of course, it's nothing like what we planned for, but it's not too far off. Here again, I'm just pressing the buttons that uh, do what I want it to do, that's all. And that's good enough for me. Okay. Now, I think we probably accidentally used some of the fuel from up here. Yeah, so I'm going to restore that fuel. Okay, and 
this was made so that this would shield the camera so its tail towards the sun is the intended direction so where's the sun oh there it is okay um, right there would do probably just uh, doing this will will cause us to deviate from the approach that I had planned there but we can correct that once we get to Venus let's add an SOI change alarm oh, okay well that's to get out of Earth actually you know what let's do the Earth exit right now okay so I don't feel a need to use our second Aphrodite probe and rocket now I can add the uh, SOI change on the Venus side but we'll leave this be because that's 162 days and we can definitely build some serious rockets in the meantime let me go back to the VAB and see what other mission I can cook up maybe we can build something related to the Phobos uh, maybe the Deimos flyby and Deimos landing let me try something for that alright I have developed our largest rocket yet in fact it's just fitting under the mass limit we still have an 800 ton mass limit and the mass of this is call it 740 tons and um, I've had to add hangar extender for the first time in this series because it doesn't quite fit in the hangar and so we're going to test it out and we're going to test it out by launching a 10 ton fuel depot so the total mass of it is 10 tons the actual fuel is um, one ton there uh, call it uh, 8.2 tons, 8. Wait, uh, no, more like 8.5 tons. 8.5 tons of fuel, though we'll have to use some of that to make orbit around the moon because this is destined for the moon. So we are going to try and put 8 tons of fuel in orbit around the moon. That's Erosine and N204, of course. And that is the plot. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, the transfer stage for the moon is a dual engine centaur stage and uh, our uh, early variants of the RL-10 and so we've got a Thor avionics unit there and uh, I've set the utilization to 94 and because we got advanced construction we now use cryogenic tanks so that's why I've decided to use the RL-10 for the first time now because if we don't have cryogenic tanks it's a little bit burdensome to try and use them but that is the lunar transfer stage but that is not going to help it make orbit around the moon the little fuel tank is going to have to do that on its own now then we've got the next stage uh, wait let me make sure yeah that's that alright the next stage um, is an NK9V and that's really lent its name to the rest of the rocket which I have called Nico so NK turned into Nico and that's just how it is so uh, dual NK9V stage as you can see so we don't need vernier thrusters because the two engines should be able to handle roll as well and they're not meant to uh, restart or anything they just uh, finish up orbit and that's that and that's four minute stage because that's the burn limit for those engines and then the next stage is four RD uh, 0210 so this is basically the same as the second stage of a proton rocket and uh, except that I don't I think it's not burning for quite as long it's three minutes and 30 seconds and that's because of avionics issues let me make sure the avionics is oh okay it was the location of theory. okay so 0.92 so I don't want to increase the size of that stage because otherwise the TWR is gonna go lower anyway all right it'll be safer this way. I'm using uh, Saturn II Ullage rockets here in order to settle the fuel down because it's a fairly heavy stage at that point. And then we've got the rest of the control units there. And then the, the first stage and its boosters. So we have eight RD253s. Uh, so basically this is larger than a Proton, which has six. We have four on the core and then four on these boosters on the outside so that is how it's going to work I think hopefully so just checking all the details before we decide to build one of these so the boosters will uh, be on for a minute and eight seconds 
and that'll give us a pretty high thrust weight ratio initially should be interesting and then the core continues on and but the core is limited by the burn time limit of these engines which is 2 minutes and 28 seconds so, and I've got them at 2 minutes and 26 so yeah we can't do too much more than that be nice if they could burn longer then we could uh, reduce the thrust weight ratio and all but interestingly at no point does this rocket get beyond a thrust weight ratio of 3 so if we can test the engines to a sufficient degree we can try and make this you know man rated crude rated uh, Kerbal rated and that would be an interesting proposition for our future moon mission okay so I think I'm going to leave it at that I'll fix staging further once we get to a launch and let me just uh, shift this up a bit so let's see if this sort of thing works alright there it is let's clear it up uh, curb alarm clock get that on okay nice daylight so we'll be able to see whether environmental visual enhancements or RSS visual enhancements is okay and everything seems to be set quite a rocket uh, we would take two of these in order to do a moon mission because it can only do 10 tons to the moon I think I mean we'll see how it does here maybe we can increase the payload mass uh, we have to make sure that the engines are all going to be alright taking a look at a test flight here uh, we've got no data on the RL-10s so that's really important uh, the NK-9Vs could do with some additional data uh, so could the RD-0210s um, the RD-253s, we're, we're pretty close to full up on those, so that's nice. But the mean time before failure is, well, no, 422 minutes, not 422 seconds, but 422 minutes is okay. Uh, the NK-9Vs and the RL-10s are more worrisome. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Get some distance. And the ignition. Okay, we better start turning soon. We are past the speed of sound. Should be through maximum dynamic pressure. Okay, let's hold for booster separation. Booster separate a little bit sloppy there. A little bit sloppy. Now we're gonna have to do an off plane transfer to the moon because I want it to be daylight so I can see the terrain. And uh, we are definitely not lined up with the moon this time. Which will be a good test anyway. Alright, holding steady for the end of the first stage. Whoa, there's some serious oscillations. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's only two G's. What the heck? Okay, Sep. Ignition. Whoa, there was some weird oscillations. Maybe connecting the stages to the Thor AV is a bad idea, but I've done that before, I thought. Hmm, some definite wobblies. I mean... To call them wobblies is an understatement. Uh, I haven't seen that in real solar system realism overhaul with Kerbal um, joint reinforcement, like ever. Well, at least for a long time. Okay, uh, fairing step. Ooh, that's pretty close too. I mean, yeah, that that is a little bit iffy, but we've done stages like that before, so that's concerning. All right, uh, well, we can wait a little bit. Well, with those oscillations, I don't think this can be Kerbal rated. We'll have to see. We'll have to do further tests to make sure that this is going to be safe for Kerbals. How far off from the moon are we?
All right, now the next stage. Okay, and K9Vs look good. Sound a little bit iffy, but they look good. So we're uh, trying to correct our inclination a bit on the fly here. Should be able to do quite a bit of that. Or, uh, we've got about 400 extra right now. Uh, that's assuming you don't tilt in this rather severe way that I'm doing. Oh, I, I need to actually go above the atmosphere. Hold on. Oh, we lost one engine. Uh, and it looks like the gimbling of the other engine is not good enough. Oh, shoot. Uh, okay. That's not good. Um, Alright. Shut down. We'll try and make orbit on the Centaur stage just so that we have the fuel tank up. Alright, set. RCS on and uh, we won't try anything fancy then prograde all uh, right um, the engine seemed good anyway oh okay. there we go definitely wanted to do a RL10 test at the very least well hmm that uh, Nico stage, not so good. I guess I'll continue to try to correct inclination. We still need to go up. Our uh, apoapsis is not good. So, oh, oh, by the way, the fuel tank in the, the fuel depot's fuel is locked right now. It doesn't have better thrust weight ratio than the centaur stage, so no point trying to dump the centaur, uh, centaur stage and use that. Um, but it doesn't look like the first test of this rocket has turned out particularly well. Nope. Uh-oh. We have gone below 100 kilometers. And things are getting hot. Okay, well, that's official failure. Um, well, let's unlock these fuels and try to do something, I suppose. Well, it's got only 0.24 thrust weight ratio, so it's pretty much done for. So yeah, that is definitely not Kerbal rated. Definitely not. Though the control unit seems to be fine. I'm just doing the normal thing, seeing if the control unit survives after all of this. I mean, until it smashes into the ground, of course. But yeah, it survived through the heat. It's always amazing when this sort of thing happens. 54 meters per second only. It's actually remarkably slow at this point. Must be the way it's tumbling, adding extra drag. But that's not going to help it to survive. Alright, so maybe next time what we need to do is some engine tests for like the first time. Uh, is it the first time in this series that I've done engine tests? I might have to do engine tests. Uh, just on the ground, strap them down, and uh, light them for a while. We'll see. Uh, we also have to pay attention to the Aphrodite mission to Venus. And uh, we will want to take advantage of that Earth to Mars transfer. And I would like the Nico Centaur rocket to be ready for that. So we'll see what we can do. Perhaps we can hurl 10 tons towards Mars now, which would be quite a lot to work with. So we'll take a look at that, and I want to get that uh, Nico Centaur rocket ready. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.